Lindsay Lohan, Charlie Sheen, Macaulay Culkin, Colin Farrell, Robert Downey Jr. No, this isn't the new cast of The Avengers. These are the actors who, at some point in their career, could not cope with the pressure of Hollywood. They are examples of how you can lose everything and get back to the top. But not everyone can do this. There is no better proof of the destructive power of fame than Mickey Rourke, an actor who was never able to get back on track. In his younger days, Mickey would never be seen with a smile across his face on camera. This isn't due to only playing sad characters, but because he lost several teeth as a young child and learned to smile without opening his mouth. As a result, he developed a strange grin. This gave him the look of a romantic character harboring a tragic secret inside. Audiences fell in love with this image, but they did not know how much pain and trauma lied behind Rourke's grin. Mickey was born just outside New York on September 16, 1952. He was the firstborn child of Anna and Philip Andre Sr. He was named Philip Andre Jr., but his father soon gave him the nickname Mickey after his favorite baseball player. And that nickname would turn out to be the only useful thing his father gave him as he left the family when Mickey was just six years old. The breakup was followed by a move to the suburbs of Miami and a new father figure. His stepfather was a former police officer who beat him and his mother mercy. Mercilessly. Mickey hated this mean brute who had become his parent. He started to spend more and more time out on the streets amongst pimps, drug dealers, and prostitutes. When his stepfather found out who he had been hanging out with, Mickey and his mother were subjected to even more beatings. Rourke started going to a boxing gym in an attempt to defend himself and his mother from the violence they experienced at home and as a way to vent his emotions. He fought anyone who would step into the ring with him, got hit, got better, and eventually became a skilled boxer who didn't let anybody hurt him anymore, even if he had to lose a few teeth in the process. Mickey developed another passion in tandem with boxing, acting. Rourke fell in love with acting by chance. His friend was putting on a play and asked Mickey to step in as the leading man had dropped out at the last moment. Mickey agreed to help out his friend and fell in love with the stage. He then decided to become a film actor. As simple as that. He moved to New York to train as an actor. He spent all of his earnings on courses and classes. Sometimes he would have to fast for several days, but this did not deter him. The main thing was that he could learn the game. Having learned a lot, Mickey left New York for Los Angeles to conquer Hollywood. He was 26 and the sky was the limit, but nothing comes easy in LA. You have to fight to win in this city. Rourke fought as hard as he could. He went to endless auditions and worked as an extra for pennies. Mickey didn't lose hope. He carried on and agreed to any job he was offered in the film industry. He had cameos in Heaven's Gate and Fade to Black and was part of the main cast in City and Fear, Act of Love, and Rape and Marriage. Producers in California started to pay attention to the young actor and noted his passion and charisma. Next was his finest hour. The 80s were the Mickey Rourke era. He played the protagonist in the cult movies Body Heat, Diner, Rumblefish, The Pope of Greenwich Village, Nine and a Half Weeks, Angel Heart, and several other films. Everyone, critics and audiences alike, only wanted one thing, more Mickey movies. People who went to see his films were first struck by his beauty. Eyes were drawn to his audacious elegance, magnetism, and bad boy energy. There was something understated about him. His voice was soft, and his eyes were always half-closed. Women saw him as a strong man who would protect them from harm, and men copied his hairstyle and mannerisms. However, he too needed warmth and affection, as he had more vulnerability on the inside than he was willing to show on the outside. People admired him for everything he did on the screen. Rourke's magic worked. He attracted a lot of attention. His success was not only the result of his talent and hard work, but also of his physical appearance. His face was angular and elegant at the same time. He could be at once feminine and delicate and strong and masculine. It was impossible to take your eyes off of him. People started comparing Mickey to Marlon Brando and James Dean, comparisons that would flatter anyone and put him in the running for the title of best actor of his generation. He became a sex symbol. The fame that he had worked for played with his head and changed him. He hired an army of managers, hairdressers, and so on. He started collecting motorcycles and cars, took care of his friends' bills, turned down any job offer below a million dollars, and began publicly criticizing Hollywood. 
As a result, directors started to say that it was impossible to work with Mickey and that they never knew what he would do next. The eager young man who said yes to every job was gone. In his place was Rourke the rock star, always a little drunk and aggressive. He was now throwing money down the drain. Fortunately, even this behavior didn't put his fans off. He had fewer big roles, but his good looks continued to serve him and audiences and producers still paid him attention. The only person who could ruin Mickey Rourke's career was himself. In the early 90s, Rourke was everywhere, talking about how he was tired of Hollywood and wanted to be his own person again, instead of belonging to insatiable film studios. He decided to go back to boxing and to take it seriously this time. He became a professional boxer, and in a few years he destroyed his golden ticket, his face. He had a broken cheekbone, several breaks in the nose, rib damage, and injuries to his toes and fingers, all from boxing. What didn't come from boxing came from several unsuccessful plastic surgeries. Mickey tried to reverse the damage done in the ring with the help of a surgeon, but the surgeon messed up and further disfigured his face. From this point on, we see a different Rourke in each new film. His appearance changed from film to film and became more and more disturbing. People no longer recognized the beloved actor who now looked like an inflated Iggy Pop. Mickey destroyed his best attribute. Now he is left with a complex personality and a botched face. He then had a fall from grace. He was demoted to the supporting roles and appeared in a series of bad movies. His money he made in the 80s was drying up. It turned out that Mickey didn't manage his spending and even forgot to pay his taxes. The IRS collected the money themselves and Rourke had to learn how to live modestly in a small room instead of the mansion he was used to. His descent into obscurity continued until the early 2000s when Robert Rodriguez attempted to bring Rourke back to the big screen. He featured Rourke in Once Upon a Time in Mexico and Sin City. Not many people recognized Rourke in these films, not just because of the makeup department, but because his face had changed so much in the last 10 years. Soon, his shot at redemption would come. Darren Aronofsky chose Mickey for the main role in his new film, The Wrestler, where Rourke would have to play, well, himself. An older wrestler who was a star in the 80s, but is now past his prime and works in a supermarket part-time to pay the bills. Mickey had a great performance in The Wrestler. He was even nominated for an Oscar. This role put him back in the limelight. He started to be offered great projects again. In 2010, he played the main villain in Iron Man 2. He joined the Expendables crew, played the antagonist in Immortals, and in 2015, he played the role of an older man in Ashby. Luck was on his side, but again, he opted for self-destruction. He criticized Marvel for leaving out half of his scenes in the final cut of Iron Man 2. After that, the big studios didn't want to work with him, so he returned to the B-movies. These days, he shoots movies in Latvia, and his next project will be produced in Greece. Unfortunately and paradoxically, Mickey's successful career, which has lasted over 40 years and gave movie lovers great films in the 80s, will not be his legacy. This is a shame for all the fans of his work. His legacy will be his damaged face, a living symbol of Hollywood's culture of self-destruction. It is possible that we will never see another person who will so accurately embody the fleeting nature of Hollywood stardom. His highs were incredible, but his lows were just as extreme. He did not know how to compromise, and he did not see nuance. Rourke never recovered from his dysfunctional family origin. He is still the boy who tried to escape from reality in the boxing ring and is willing to pay for it with his teeth. He never understood his own talent and the face he was gifted with, and you can't appreciate what you don't understand. Mickey was a self-made man, but he destroyed himself too. The pain of this loss was felt by everyone who watched his movies and remembered who he used to be. And this pain will remain with him and with us until the end.